We're talking today about primary source document analysis, and I'm taking this acronym APARTS, A-P-P-A-R-T-S, from Dr. Cora Greer of the University of Maine at Machias. So APART stands for author. So with that question, when you look at a primary source document, you want to know who created the document. P, place and time. Where and when was the document produced? The second P, prior knowledge. What information beyond the author and the context of the creation of the document do we need to know? What broader context about the historical time period is important? All right. The second A, audience. For whom was the source created? R, reason. Why was the source created? T, the main idea. What point is being conveyed through the document? And finally, S, significance. So what? Why is the document important in history? So here is the document. So let's read it together. It's a primary source document from March 1539. The Lord Viceroy, having news and notice of such land, sent a friar and a Negro, the latter having come from Florida with the others, as survivors of the party taken there by Panfilio Naves. These set out with the knowledge the Negro had in order to go to a very rich country, as the latter declared, and told the friar that there are seven very populous cities with great buildings. They have houses built of stone and lime, being of three stories, and with great quantities of turquoises set in doors and windows. So using the APARTS acronym, let's start with number one, author. Well, the author of this document is not known. But we do know that this is an official document, so it likely came from someone. And, and when we're talking about viceroys in this document, we're talking about a Spanish official, the, a representative of the Spanish crown in the Americas or in the New World. All right. So it's coming from it's an official document. All right. Place and time. We know that this is about the southwestern United States, so probably western New Mexico, where western New Mexico is now on the United States map. We also know that this is 1539. This is 1539 in the western part of the state, what is now the state of New Mexico. Now, prior knowledge. Prior knowledge as it relates to African American studies is an awareness of Atlantic Creoles and who the Atlantic Creoles are. And that's where we're going to go next with the next slide. So, Ira Berlin, a prominent historian of African American studies and African American history, wrote a book of the Generations of Slavery, and in it he captures each generation up to the time that the freedom generation, the generation of African Americans who gained their freedom after the Civil War, he, cap and he captures and describes each generation. The first generation that he talks about are the Charter generation. And this generation began to exist in the New World. This generation of Africans existed in the New World starting in the early 15th century. And he calls them Atlantic Creoles. Now, what's significant about the Atlantic Creoles? Well, here are a few things that are. They were familiar with commerce in the Atlantic. So these are Africans who traveled alongside Europeans, became familiar with the commerce there. They were fluent in multiple languages. So these Africans not only knew their native indigenous language in Africa, but they also knew Spanish, English, Dutch, French. So they knew mo they were bilingual, trilingual, multilingual. They were very intimate with trade and cultures on, on both sides of the Atlantic. They were negotiators in the slave trade. A lot of them lived off of the coast of Africa. Now, why is that significant? Well, when the Europeans arrived 
off the western coast of Africa, these were some of the first people that they interacted with and they confronted. They were traded or they lived in Europe. Some of them lived in Europe, so some of them were traded over to the New World uh, in the Americas. Others of them went to Europe and lived in Europe. Okay, and this is where they gained their proficiency in European languages. They moved to the margins of the slave world when planters began to value youth and strength, not experience. So these people, these Atlantic Creoles were experienced. They may have been older, right? So they weren't, their value wasn't their strength. The value of these enslaved Africans who were Atlantic Creoles was their experience, their knowledge, their linguistic skills. So that's a little bit of the background information and the prior knowledge that I think would be helpful as we look at and analyze this primary social document. Continuing on with the acronym. So now we're at the second A, audience. So who's the audience of this document? Now this was an official document describing uh, a group of people traveling in Southwest United States in 1539. This was not a rare okay, or, or This was pretty common for these official documents describing travels to uh, go out to people. And so this, the audience here are Spanish explorers. It was not uncommon for people to read about the travels of other explorers and want to copy what they did. So this is sort of like a travel manual. So the audience are other are potential Spanish explorers. Our reason. Well, this was because the audience, potential Spanish explorers, the reason here is to provide a, a roadmap, something for other potential future explorers to follow. So a roadmap for future Spanish explorers. T, the main idea. Again, we're continuing on this theme of exploration, but I think the Crown wanted to encourage and promote exploration in the Southwest United States. At this time, the United States, again, was, was inhabited by indigenous people or Indian people. The Spanish had heard about these seven beautiful cities of gold and they wanted to encourage, the Crown wanted to encourage explorers, also known as conquistadors, to travel and find this place to enrich the Spanish crown. Okay, so to encourage exploration is the main idea. Now let's look back at the primary source document and read it one more time for understanding. Okay, and, and looking at it w with a critical analytical eye. The Lord Viceroy an official having news and notice of such land sent a friar and a Negro. Okay. The latter having come from Florida with the others as survivors of the party taken there by Panfilio Navias. He was a famous Spanish explorer. These set out with the knowledge the Negro had in order to go to a very rich country. As the latter declared and told the friar that there were seven very populous cities with great buildings the seven golden cities that they all were looking for. They have houses built of stone and lime, being of three stories and with great quantities of turquoises set in doors and windows. So if you notice from the apart's acronym, I left out one thing, and that is the last letter, which is S, and that is the significance. So what? Why is this document even important in African-American history? Well, the Negro that was discussed here Fire and a Negro is a gentleman by the name of Esteban. He's also known as Estenavico, also known as Little Stephen in history. Several important things we need to keep in mind as we think about this Negro. One, he's traveling with Spanish explorers. And generally in African-American history, we think of 1619 as the first uh, as, as the year that the first Africans arrived in the United States. Well, that's not the case. There were African -Ameri Africans on the continent of the United States, uh, or, or in the country of the United States, uh, before 1619. 
as early as 1539, and even earlier we see a presence of African Americans. Secondly, he is an example of an Atlantic Creole. He obviously communicated with the friars, so he knew Spanish, he knew his own language uh, uh, there in Africa, but he also had knowledge. Okay, these set out, so he led a group, these set out with the knowledge the Negro had in order to go to a very rich country. So he essentially led the group with his knowledge of the area. So he had a, a lot of knowledge of this area. So again, this is, the significance is there were, there were Africans in the United States before 1619. Uh, Esteban or Little Stephen was an Atlantic Creole with a lot of knowledge and he helped lead this, this uh, group of men exploring the southwestern United States. Well, unfortunately, Estanavico, or Little Stephen, Esteban, and his group, they were met uh, by a group of natives in southwest North, uh, New Mexico and were killed uh, because of the intrusion on their land, because the natives thought that he was trying to take them over with the other Spaniards there. But the significance is still powerful because without Little Stephen, the Spanish would not have had an inroads into the southwestern part of the United States. So Estanavico opened the door for Span the Spanish conquest. Now that's not good for the indigenous people of the southwest, but it does put this African in a very significant and important place when we look at Spanish explorers and the Spanish conquest of southwest U.S. Thank you.